Okay, let's talk very briefly about some key things you need to know about the periodic table and a quick summary of what we talked about today in class. Okay, the periodic table, uh, as you, many of you have probably seen it before, is arranged into sections with, uh, to the left side as you look at it are going to be metals, uh, to the right side are going to be non-metals. And along the metalloid line, those are going to be elements that have properties of metals and non-metals. They're arranged in families or groups, which are vertical columns, and periods, which are horizontal rows. Okay, like I said, vertically into groups, horizontally into periods, and there's some characteristics of... Um, special characteristics and things the periodic table will tell you based on the group or the period. Okay, if you look at an atom, any any atom in group one, uh, all of those all of those atoms, all those elements, atoms of those elements are going to be are going to have one valence electron. Okay, it, they're all going to have the same number in the, in the outermost shell, and if if you're in group one, that's going to be one valence electron. So if we take, for example, group two, all right, we have beryllium, the picture to your left right here. First shell, as we learned earlier, can hold two electrons, and then there are two left over in beryllium's case that would fit on the uh, valence shell. Okay, if we look over here to the right, if you count the electrons, this is magnesium, all right, and this follows our same rule. We have two, ele two electrons in the innermost shell. Okay, then we move to the second shell where we have eight electrons. All right, and then there's, that leaves two left over for the third shell. Uh, so this just kind of shows you that all elements of this group, of group two, are going to have two valence electrons. Okay, uh, number of valence electrons determine how uh, and what atoms of particular elements bond with. All right, and the way they bond determine the properties of that element. So now let's take a look at periods. If you look at the period, um, it's going to tell you a few things. Okay, each atom of a given period will have the same number of electron shells. So, for example, uh, group one, we had hydrogen up here in group one, hydrogen, helium. Um, they're only going to have one uh, electron shell. Okay, if we take a look at group four here, it starts with potassium. All the elements of group four, including the transition metals, are going to have four uh, four shells uh, with varying valence electrons. So the fourth period tells you that there are four shells. One, two, three, four. Okay. So if we take potassium, for example, and what we talked about earlier with uh, the valence electrons and related to the group, uh, is group one, period four. So we should have one valence electron and four shells. So let's take a look and see if it works out. Okay, we have 19 total. We have two in the center, or two in the first shell. That leaves us with 17 left over. Okay, the next shell can hold eight. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, so the two and eight is 10. Now the next shell can hold 18, but like I told you, it wants to hold eight. Okay, it wants to hold eight. And we know that there are four shells, so that there's got to be another shell, and it's got to at least have one electron on it if there's a four shell. Okay, so then we put we fill in our our four shell with our valence electron that we talked about uh, from group one, uh, and then whatever's left over we're going to fill in on that next to last shell, which in this case happens to be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, and the same thing would go for any uh, element in this period. Four shells. All right, and that's, uh, that's the gist of what we talked about today. Um, and we will update it tomorrow with the rest of the periodic table stuff.